We have isolated this gospel reading from the moment that really prompted the conflict between the Pharisees and those who were listening and the proclamation of Jesus. Immediately before this, in the Gospel of Luke, you have um, Jesus drives out an evil spirit. He drives out the demons out of a man. And uh, the people don't believe that he is sent by God. So they said it must be by Beelzebub, by the devil, that he drives out devils. And this, what we have in our gospel today, follows the conflict. And it speaks about Jonah. We read about Jonah during the week here at the morning mass. Jonah was the reluctant prophet who went to Nineveh. And the people repented. Nineveh is very familiar to us as Mosul. It's in Iraq. And uh, it was a large town in the Assyrian Empire at the time. And when he announced that it was time to repent, they all repented. And the queen of uh, Sheba came all the way to Solomon. But here there is somebody greater. But you will not believe because you are dense and you are closed to change. Now change becomes a big issue with the Pharisees. They had a religious belief. They had a religious institution that was so entrenched that a proclamation of a messianic statement by Jesus, they could not accept because it was change. Change is difficult. You know, in the English uh, literature, in the world of novels, the two greatest works, considered the greatest of all novels, is James Joyce Ulysses and Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov. Interestingly, in that long novel, The Brothers, um, Dostoevsky has this, he proposes this. An agent of the Inquisition, remember the Inquisition, is questioning, debating with Christ uh, about uh, the people and religion and and what's happening. And uh, of course, the agent of the Inquisition is thinking very much the establishment. I mean, he's thinking about the laws and the institution. Whereas Christ is teaching about something brand new, a new revelation, a new sense, and the Pharisaic thing is gone. So he says, uh, the agent of, of the Inquisition says this, he says, Christ didn't understand people because people are more attached to institutional thinking than they are fearful of change, of a new idea, of a new invitation to faith, which is leading us into something unseen. And maybe he was right in some ways, that we tend to cling to institutional thinking rather than be free to look at something beyond the institution, a new idea, a change, a fresh understanding of what's happening. That was the crisis in the time of Christ. He didn't have any problem with sinners. He broke bread with sinners, and sinners came, and he healed sinners. No problem. His problem was with institutional religion at the time. And he was introducing something new, a fresh approach, a new understanding of God and God's presence. But the people, the Pharisees, the institutional religion resisted him. And that's what causes the conflict which appears in the gospel reading today. If we are to learn something from it, it must be that in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we have to be free. New ideas will emerge, a new understanding of yourself, a new way of following Jesus Christ will appear to you in your life. It might be some huge change in your life. It might be some reversal in your life. It might be some sickness or whatever it is. But 
feel the call of the Holy Spirit to begin to understand God revealing in a way you have not seen before. That's what this gospel teaches us. Don't be afraid of change. You know, years ago, um, when I used to travel more, especially when I traveled with the Cardinal, we'd wear our clerics. Um, so I arrived on this once on, on an airplane from Los Angeles to Athens. I was going to Athens. And I was wearing my clerics. And invariably, somebody would sit next to me and say, are you a Catholic priest? Oh, yes, I am. Yeah. By the way, how come Frank Sinatra could get married a second or third time and go to communion. My cousin, my cousin couldn't get married the second time and go to communion. How about that? Now, they don't want an answer. They want an argument. <laughs> and you get that. You get that all the time, you know. How come the Pope is doing this? And what's doing this? They don't want to know why the Pope is doing this. They don't want to know what, what the church is teaching. They want an argument. They are like the Pharisees. They're stuck in a certain place, and they're not open to change. So if we're going to learn something from this reading today, it says, be free. God is revealing. In your reversals, in the challenges of your life, in the struggles, in the uncertainties of your life, God is present. That's the teaching. Which means we're going to enter into this day, and we're going to have a good day because God is with us. Feel the presence of God. Whatever happens today, get the sense of God's presence, then you will understand this gospel reading. Amen. We pause now for a moment of prayer. I'm going to pray for native people, for indigenous people. History must teach us something about indigenous people all over the world, everywhere, and how in a colonial uh, stretch of history they were disenfranchised and very bad things happened to them. So we'd like to remember with a generous prayer all the native peoples throughout the world who have been um, badly treated, even in our own country. So we keep a prayer for them today. Amen.